Life and Problems Gems from the Ocean of the Bee Every moment life presents many situations, problems and circumstances. But confusion and despair remains your way of life. Out of your ignorance, you go on overlooking or avoiding. This is the state of unconscious living and understanding. You do not trust the existence. You are part of it, yet you do not trust. Remember every circumstance or situation has great treasures hidden deep within. Your trust, awareness and meditation by going deep within the situation will unearth many treasures or gems. Each time you dive deep within the inner depths, you will discover treasures. Your being is unfathomable ocean. It has many gems and precious moments of understanding hidden. When you go deep within these moments, myriad gems will unravel their secrets to you as understanding and awareness. But man is unconscious. Although he believes he is conscious, that very belief protects his unconsciousness. Man is ignorant. Although he believes he knows, that very belief keeps the ignorance intact. Man is just opposite of what he thinks he is. To understand this is the beginning of a great revolution. This is dropping idealism and it is the beginning of a new journey, exploring gems from the ocean of the people. And it is the beginning of a new journey, exploring gems from the ocean of the being. Then to see where you are and what you are in reality indeed needs courage. It is nice to believe in beautiful ideals. However, all ideals function only for one thing. They hide your reality. And that is why we go on creating beautiful ideals. Not that we are really interested in those great ideals. Our real interest is how to hide the ugly facts. There is difference between facts and truth. Truth is far more subtle and sublime. When you know truth, it overwhelms you. You know by the head and by the toes. You know by your bones and by your guts. You know by your heart and by your blood. You know it by your breathing, just by your very being. Truth is known by being, not by mind. That is the meaning when I say truth is felt. It is an experience. When one can watch the mind without condemning or appreciating it, without judging as good or bad, this I do not want or that I want, without uttering a single statement about mind, when one can watch it in deep silence, 
that is meditation. A miracle happens with meditation and it happens only with meditation. What actually happens in meditation? You enter into altered states of awareness and that changes your understanding. When you are simply standing out, not participating, no longer active in any way, utterly inactive and silent, then mind disappears. Then slowly and slowly it goes farther and farther away. Slowly and slowly you hear only noises coming from a distance and suddenly a moment comes, there is no mind. It has faded out completely or it has withered away. And when mind is not there, you are left alone without the mind. The fragrance is released. You have come home. You have become fulfilled. The one thousand petal lotus of your being has opened. You have offered your fragrance to existence. And offering your fragrance to existence is prayer. Prayer is not words. Prayer is the offering of your fragrance to existence. That is the only gift we can give to God. And that is the only gift which can be accepted by God. Fragrance of your being. Your being has blossomed and in that blossoming the flower has attained to its ultimate flowering, its beauty and fragrance is released, that is the prayer. But that is something more than mind in you. Certainly that is the only hope. There is something deeper than mind in you. And that which is deeper than the mind is your consciousness. Consciousness is not part of the mind. You can even watch your mind, so the watcher is separate from the mind and different from the mind as well. And this watcher has a totally different quality. This is just opposite of the mind. This is the quality called contentment, rather absolute contentment then each moment is so full of joy that you are so exquisitely joyful that even if death comes right now you will not ask for another moment because this moment was enough. There is no question of asking for another world. Even for another moment you will not say to death, wait, because I have to finish a few things. Because there are a few things which I was doing and they are still incomplete. Instead you will say I am ready this very moment. And if one is ready to rebel against the mind, bliss explodes and brings victory. The only victory which can be really called victory is not the victory over somebody. Instead, the victory over your own innermost self, the victory which makes you capable of entering into the kingdom of God, your innerness. However, the modern mind has not been able to understand the mystic and mysticism. The mystic seems to be very alien to the modern mind. And mind always complains, 
whenever a mystic is speaking it is going above the head at least the mystic should speak the master should speak something which can be understood easily by man if that be the case my purpose is not served when you enter in the class of standard 1 whatever you are taught is above your head you are not taught their preschool teachings preschool messages you are taught something which goes over your head and that is the only way to clear the standard one and reach the next standard master speaks only of something which touches your head because he is not here to entertain you he is here to me to bring about transformation the mystic seems to be very alien to the modern mind just sitting silently doing nothing not even thinking then why are you sitting the western approach or the modern man is a mind approach it is dominated by philosophy because of that domination it cannot think that there can be any possibility of just being and not and doing nothing no questions no problems and no thoughts just relaxing and resting in oneself remember life is a flux and everything goes on changing everything is in a movement in life there are no nouns only moves there is only one noun and that is god everything else is verb because nothing else is eternal everything is momentary one moment it is there and the next moment it is gone that is why it is better to say reverie and loving instead of river and love when you witness all this then slowly and slowly you are neither happy nor unhappy because we think always mind thinks always in terms of duality if someone says i am not happy that means immediately inferred that you must be unhappy and that state when neither happiness nor unhappiness is there is bliss indeed and that state when neither happiness nor unhappiness is there is called bliss you are neither cold nor hot that is buddha hood you are neither man nor woman that is god realization you have gone beyond the duality and in that rest one arrives one arrives at the very innermost core and that is where you find truth nowhere else one can find the truth the philosopher searches everywhere but in vain the mystic simply sits in his own home doing nothing and discovers the truth lausse says that you need not even go out of the room all that you want consciousness you can find inside and he is right the more conscious you are the more you feel bliss arising in you the day one is fully conscious and there is no nook and corner of your being dark when one is luminous when one has become light each act is done in full awareness 
then one can even sleep in full awareness. That has been the goal down the ages. This is the real search of religion, how to come to a point when you can sleep and yet be alert and awake. Right now the situation is just the opposite. You are awake and yet asleep. The day it happens, one has entered into the world of the Divine, the world of God, what Jesus calls the Kingdom of God and Buddha calls Nirvana. This requires looking within. To look within is the first and the last step of intelligence. Because once you look in, there is nothing worth looking outside. There is nothing looking out for. Once you look within, you have seen the greatest treasure of existence. You have encountered God. Once you, look, once you look within, you have seen the greatest treasure of existence. You have encountered God. Now there is nothing more valuable or anything more precious. All desires simply disappear the moment you look within. Desire simply makes you a beggar. And when you des when desires disappear, the beggar is gone and you become a king or a queen. That is the whole effort of a spiritual journey. Certainly this is the way to give you the key to the kingdom of God. The whole emphasis is on meditativeness and inwardness. However, we are accustomed too much to the outside world and absolute unfamiliar to the inner realm that we fail to go within. This is the only problem. The problem of all problems or the root problem. You can go on solving other problems and nothing will be solved. Because you are only pruning the leaves, the foliage, and at, the, and at the most the branches, but the root is there and the tree will go on growing. It will bring new leaves, new foliage and new branches. In fact, the more you prune it, the richer the tree will become. This implies watching just watching. Indeed, it is really a miracle to watch. Just a small thought can take you to the farthest end. And if you look, you do not see any connection. A dog starts barking and your thought process is triggered. The dog is forgotten and you remember a friend who had a beautiful dog or something else. If you are trying to meditate, you have an important conversation. Watching, enjoying, seeing thoughts, taking their turn is as beautiful as seeing the sea with millions of waves. This too is sea. And thoughts are waves, but people go on enjoying the waves in the ocean and they do not enjoy the waves in their consciousness. I teach you enjoying everything, otherwise we go on finding something or the other to fight with. Somebody is fighting with sex and next one is fighting with anger and somebody starts fighting with thinking and someone else starts fighting with emotions while next one with the body. But one thing is same, they all fight. And to fight is to destroy your innerness. There is no need to fight. Love. 
all fighting energy has to be transformed into love energy therefore live life intensely and totally live life at the optimum so that there is transformation put yourself totally into each and everything that you do without holding even an iota of energy then love becomes awareness walking becomes awareness then even sleep becomes awareness because at each peak awareness automatically happens and then it has a beauty of its own it is for the heart to suggest its problems and it is for the awareness to solve them through understanding and intellect the problem is simply an indication that the solution is within you and you are not looking for it so you go into your confusion allow it to assert itself watch it and see and do not be in a hurry to get out of it because whenever one is in a hurry to get out understanding stops completely that is the point of understanding what is the point of understanding something which you want to drop and you cannot drop it unless you have understood it it is the dichotomy try to understand it in that very understanding confusion disappears clarity comes out of understanding your confusion and answers come by going deep within your problem certainly one day it happens all confusion is gone all problems to disappear and you are left alone the beauty of that aloneness is nirvana or enlightenment everything remains as it is only now between you and reality there is no more clouds everything is the same so to you are the same the world is the same it is just something between the two the confusion that cloud is no more there then you discover your dignity man's dignity is that he can choose to be prayerful or not to be prayerful man is always at the crossroads each step and there is a choice each step and you can go wrong or right when sadness and cheerfulness confront you always choose cheerfulness when seriousness and playfulness confront you always choose playfulness and remember we become whatsoever we choose it is simply a question of choice always choose that which helps to expand your consciousness that which helps you to go beyond from this moment you start becoming aware of it and you will be surprised sometimes in the middle of your sadness suddenly the clouds disperse and sun shines again in its full glory suddenly you see the point that you have chosen to be sad and there is no need to be sad life is such a beautiful gift that one should not waste a single moment in sadness anger jealousy hate and possessiveness one should dance one's way to god one should laugh one's way to god drop all sadness and seriousness and do not ask how to drop it that is a strategy of the mind to go on keeping them it is a way of postponement 
How is the way of postponement? Simply drop misery. Do not linger on or postpone it. Say goodbye and do not look back. We have the habit of looking back always and you will be surprised. Once you say goodbye and do not look back that how simple it is. It is so natural to be blissful. It is unnatural to be miserable, to be sad. It is really a very difficult job to be miserable. But people are so skillful, so intelligent at being miserable. They have become great artists of misery. If there is nothing to be miserable about, they will invent something to remain miserable. Underneath the current, bliss continues. It is just like breathing or blood circulating in the body. If the circulation stops for a single moment, you will be dead. But you will never become aware of the circulation. In fact, for thousands of years, doctors used to think that blood was simply contained within the body. Just 300 years ago, they became aware that it circulates. And it is not just there like a liquid in a bottle, but it is continuously moving. Blood is alive and pulsating within your body. Your body will die if the breathing stops. Just as breathing, blood circulation, and food nourishment is necessary for the existence of body, so too bliss is necessary for the existence of the soul. But a little digging inside is needed so that you can uncover the undercurrent. Once you have known your blissfulness and the source of it, your whole vision changes, your whole perspective is new. Then you look at the existence with new eyes. Then whatsoever you have found inside, you will find everywhere because whatsoever we are, we find in existence. Existence is simply a mirror. It reflects our real face with a mask. The mask is reflected. Existence only echoes our being. Once you have known that bliss is your nature, then the whole nature of the ex universe becomes blissful. That is what is meant by realization, that is liberation. Realization dawns that meditation is a great leap into the unknown. Gather yourself together for a great journey. Yes, there is a risk, but with risk alone, treasures of life are discovered. Yes, there is insecurity, but insecurity is adventure. Yes, there is danger, but danger, but with danger, millions of thrills arise. And you are always in for a surprise because you are moving into unknown territory. Danger and risk is there, but never boredom. The path to heaven is of deep aloneness. A meditator enters into his mind and starts watching how the mind functions. Just the very fact of watching the mind makes him aware that he is not the mind and he is not anything that belongs to the mind. He is a far away entity, qualitatively different, just a pure watching. In other words, just a pure mirror which only reflects the reality but is not imprinted by any reality. If one experiences 
or understands inwardly the deep feeling of becoming a dry leaf to be moved only by the existence itself then how can one push oneself to breathe or jump or do anything at all but lie flat on the earth and dissolve then you realize that experience and understanding are two different things then you realize that experience and understanding are two different things if you experience this there is no need to ask the question just lie down flat on the ground and dissolve there is no need to ask any question when you experience something this brings understanding and then there is no question of asking then creativity as the fragrance of the flower of love is born in you when love blossoms its fragrance fills the aura as creativity and love is the root of creativity love nourishes the creativity if you are in love you are naturally and spontaneously creative then myriad flowers blossom then myriad flowers blossom and their beauty and the fragrance fills you to the very core of your being. 